to, to answer it because we've seen the question, so it's not it's not uh, no. I think that there 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 are serious issues in the economy that we need to tackle. It is not the grandstanding, and uh, that is important. It is getting the serious issues resolved. Now, Kufuado has made it very clear that his government is going to build a globally competitive economy. Uh, we have not really been thinking global. Uh, um, and, and this is what we need to do, that we have to understand that we are in competition with other countries and, and investment moves from country to country. Uh, and we, so we have to think global. And so, you know, the Nanaku Fuado policy, which he stated, uh, was, is just basically to build the most people-friendly and the most business-friendly economy in Africa. This is the goal that we are going to try to do, the most people-friendly and the most business-friendly. The tax issue um, is a major issue because if you are so you know, fixated on revenue, you will essentially end up hurting your production. And, and so if you go back into history, you study the economic history of United States, Germany, England, all of them have used the tax, you know, um, policy to encourage production. Mm. And this is why we are saying that, I mean, <coughs> today you have a situation in Ghana, <coughs> unbelievable situation, when businesses are out on strike. Businesses who should be selling mm. are out on strike. Well, why are they out on strike? Because they've been overburdened by taxes. You know, and if you don't take care, you'll be chasing the tax revenue and killing businesses. And when you kill businesses, it means you are causing unemployment. And so if you go back, this is why Nana Kofuado is saying, you know, we need to mobilize financial resources. So why are you mm. going to be imposing VAT on financial services? It doesn't make sense in a country which has got a very large unbanked population and we want people to bank. We will abolish that, mm. he says. We will abolish import duty on all raw materials because that has been a, a policy that will help production. Let the businesses produce. Let them make profit. And and when they make profit and employ people, we will get income taxes and we will get corporate taxes. So you don't go ahead to kill the business. No, let them bring in the raw materials. Let them produce. Then you will tax, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, and, and, and I think that you, then you have a government where you have cutlasses being taxed, condoms being taxed, <laughs> you know, and even savings. There was mm. a 1% imposition on savings, which was later withdrawn. On investments, yes. On investments, mm. Mm. which was later... I mean, even to think about it was... was it's, well, it's, it's been suspended. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so it's been suspended. I mean, I mean but even to think abolished. about it... Mm. Oh, it's now abolished, yes. is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. but even to think about, about it, it, it doesn't... It just questions who are making these policies. I mean... But you, isn't I mean, it isn't just it, another way... Another um, you way know, of raising it, revenue. Well, yes, but when you become desperate, this is what happens. That when you've mismanaged the economy mm. into this hole, then anything sounds great to you because <laughs> you don't have any option. A lot of stuff in the, in the Ghanaian press want to know is where exactly is the money going to come from next time around if you're in power for some of the very extravagant promises you've made. You, for example, have offered free secondary schooling for all Ghanaians, a promise you say you absolutely will absolutely. deliver in four years absolutely, in power. Absolutely, so absolutely. So have you costed it? How much will it cost? The costing, the costing is, is being done. I mean, very, very soon we will well, be in a position. You can't make a promise like no, that. No, no, no. Costing. Very soon, we're going, to, we're very soon we're going to be putting it out. You don't know how much. I do know how much, well, but I prefer to tell the Ghanaian people directly well, before you, I tell you. Many of them I prefer, won't talk. You can no, tell me. It doesn't matter. I would prefer to make that statement to the people of Ghana directly first. As, as to the cost of any So time. you do know the cost? Oh, we do. And we have a very good idea how and how and also we're going to finance it. Well, you don't have to give, you're obviously not going to give me the figures, but just but tell me how you're going to pay going for it. To it's clearly going to be a very great cost. You've got to train the teachers, you've got to build new schools. All of that, is, all of that is, has been adequately costed, and we believe that, first of all, the new revenues will help. More efficient management of what we have now. Growth in the Ghanaian economy. These are the three sources 
which are going to enable us to fulfill that promise. And it's a promise that has been solemnly made to the Ghanaian people and is going to be solemnly kept. Not because it's a campaign promise, but because it is a necessity for the future of our country to educate all our young people it, and not to acquiesce in a, rela in a situation whereby only segments of the community that have some money are able to educate it's their a, children. It's, an interesting it's a point, major right? issue well, then, of me... human capital development. Indeed. And if we do not make the effort to, 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 to achieve that, the development paradigm that we want to achieve is going to be very difficult for us to do Let so. me quote to you the words of Patrick Awu. I want to tell Nanado that it's not too late to hold a national stakeholders conference on free senior high school. We all, we all agree on the concept of free senior high school. Where we differ is about progressively. Somebody decides that he wants to implement it, it within three years. You don't have enough dormitories. You don't have enough classrooms. You don't have enough textbooks. You don't have enough laboratories. You don't have enough dining halls. You don't have administration blocks. And yet you say in three years, for a program that is so fundamental, you have no policy, you have no guideline, you are just uh, uh, implementing it in an ad hoc manner, and we say, slow down. When we say this, you say we are naysayers. It means we don't like free senior high school. School, I don't know, I don't know. You are called to say, wah, wah, wah. Give him, 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 give him. No review today, no review tomorrow. Magi, I'm going to for my World Bank and I say IMF. Parliament. Many NDC for the parliament. The BIA are to move to parliament. Who NDC for? NDC for no. NDC for no. Any MPP for no. Ah, our parliament no. Yeni na yeni tum. NDC for no. Edge ya tum se yile vini ye. The BIA are moving to say se yeni re huni em pushi ani em passi yile vino. Ni e passi e ba boi. Ne mo amu di amu tibi ma me kanche. Currency Currencies depreciate when the fundamentals are wrong. Right. And the mismanagement of this economy in terms of the fundamentals is what was driving the, the, the depreciation of the currency. You can't be running double-digit deficits, double-digit current account and fiscal deficits, borrowing to this extent, financing your deficit with huge printing of money from the central bank, right. and expect your currency to be stable. The fundamentals will not support it. Right. They will not support for a bailout. Well, the president says it's uh, policy uh, credibility, yeah. not a bailout. <laughs> what should go in there? Because along the line with your predictions and the lectures you gave, you said that if things don't go well, that is where we might have to go. If we're going for a bailout, what are we asking for? Well, I think um, I, I, did, I did make the point, I think, in my last major lecture in, in Ghana that if the government doesn't take certain decisions, we will end up with a request for a bailout in, with, from the IMF. And this is exactly what has happened. Mismanagement has consequences. Bad policies have consequences. And Ghana is going to... Andy, a final year student, UCC, 
Great. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Vice President. My question is actually simple. Um, His Excellency, the President, you know, <coughs> has said several times that his vision for Ghana is one of, you know, a country beyond aid, mobilizing its, you know, human and then material resources. Mr. Vice President, as head of the economic management team, in your own view, by the end of the first term, you know, of this government, what do you think or what do you, you know, foresee to be the state of the Ghanaian economy by the end of your first term? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The question on Ghana beyond aid, it is really critical. For, for, I mean, no country really is going to develop by depending on aid. We have to move away from a dependency on aid for our development. And this is really what is, what is driving Nana Akufuado's vision for this, this, this country. And clearly, the way we have started, by the, clearly, clearly, by the end of our first term, by the grace of God, we will, we will move away this economy. I expect to see an economy that is transformed and depending on its own resources for its development. That is really where we are headed, and that is where, I, where Nana Kufuado is taking this country to, a transformed economy, an economy that is standing on its own feet and, 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 and making its own decisions for development. So I am very optimistic about uh, taking Ghana to a country beyond aid. Oko, book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 1. Osideng, it is not by might, nor by power. Oko, book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 1. Osideng, it is not by might, nor by power. This is why we got into the IMF. You were spending too much relative to revenues, which is true. You were borrowing too much, which is true. Your external payments position has deteriorated, which is true. And so you ended up, your growth is reducing, which is true. So you ended up at the IMF, and the IMF would impose certain conditions, which is true. And if you don't do certain things right, you will get, you will not, the anchor will not hold, which is true. So I'm not quite sure uh, what it is that is not true that I said. Uh, but I think, um, unfortunately, the supporters of this government and this government itself are very uh, reluctant to admit the truth, even when it hits them in the face. Yeah. Tell you what, your opinion of kind of informal sector, I tell you, come as if you say and do this for your couple and be a quiet my Ghana Ranso and be a quiet my say, I would say, I will say, say, Brown Ghana for every city, with your couple, I am quiet, I'm a real quiet my say, you keep your couple of tea. Uh, that we, we, we make sure that happens. Um, we've put in place a very first class um, economic management team. Um, I would even say world class because the, um, the Minister of Finance, the very known Wall Street banker, investment banker, um, really high achiever. The, the, the former Minister of Finance, who is Deputy 
che, vice chair of the economic management team, Yao Safo Mafu. He was voted at once time the best finance minister in Africa by the World Economic Forum and, and many others. They're just a solid, capable group of individuals who have come together to manage the team. And we meet every week without fail. Uh, and, 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 and so we have a laser-eyed focus on the economy, and we are taking decisions and, and making sure uh, we monitor what is going on. We plan a rapid and vigorous development of educational infrastructure in the first 18 months of the next MPP government. This will involve the building of 350 new senior high schools from scratch whilst rehabilitating and expanding existing ones. Since these schools will be spread across the length and breadth of our country, this construction activity will immediately lead to an explosion of employment in all districts of our country. I'm promising you, Within 18 months of a new government of the NPP under my leadership, the face of our country Ghana is going to change. Within 18 months of a new government of the NPP under my leadership, the face of our country Ghana is going to change. So within 18 months of a new government of the NPP under my leadership, the face of our country Ghana is going to change. Electricity tariffs will be above the tissue. We're coming to reduce electricity tariffs. I'm not saying that 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 I'm not in the first two years of an MPP and administration, under this infrastructure for poverty eradication program where every constituency will get one million dollars every year for rural and deprived communities under this program there should be no village or community in ghana after the first two years that would have a water problem or a toilet problem hey. i've said it and i'll repeat it again those who are coming to this administration thinking that it's an avenue for making a lot of money are going to be disappointed. <laughs> they better go to the private sector. That is where people make money, not in government. I think that the, the most effective way that we can have a debt portfolio for our country that is sustainable is to make sure that the NDC loses this election in December. Kicking out the NDC will be the surest way we can to protect the debt structure of our country. Why do I say that? In the four years in which they have been in power, they have more than tripled our national debt from 9 billion CDs, which was at the end of Kufour's period, to 28 billion CDs today. In the four years of the NDC administration, they have contracted more debt than all the governments of our country, from Kwame Nkrumah right down to John Ajikum Kufour. That is the nature of the situation confronting our country. And I dare say the President would agree with me 
that without the rebasing of the economy, the debt profile of our country today will be getting towards epic proportions. So we need, when we're talking about the debt profile of our country, to bear in mind two things. One, the, the areas into which the debt goes. And I agree with some, some of my previous speakers that the productive investment and the rate of return on them is a critical one. Equally critical is the value for money of the transactions that the debt brings about. We need to look at that. I've given some examples of public procurements that are taking place in our country on an extremely inflated rate. Once again, we need to look at this. You're talking about loans that are given and inside the loans, the arrangements for determining value for money remain very opaque and unclear. How can you persuade the Ghanaian people the debts are being contracted in these circumstances that are there to push forward their future. We intend to be extremely disciplined about the contraction of debt. We're first of all going to respect the teachings of the national budget and treat it as precious. We will not be stepping outside the constraints of the budget. We are going to make sure that we reduce considerably each areas of corruption in the construction and execution of some of these projects. These are the critical matters that our people are looking for leadership on. That we are not going to get ourselves in air, airline and other trans aircraft and other transactions that leave so many questions to be answered. The 28 billion is even without the latest Chinese. Thing. Thank you so much. Secondly, this government has borrowed more money than all previous governments put together did in 50 year, 52 years. I ask, as all of us must ask, Sikano Ewahe, Sikano Ewahe, Sikano Ewahe. I suspect reviewing means collapsing. That's that's how that's my understanding. I've heard it being said that uh, oh, I should be careful. These, some, many of these people voted for me, and if I continue this exercise, perhaps they will not vote for me again. If, if by the grace of God I'm in, I'm, I, I'm in a position, my party allows me to go again, and I have the health and everything to go again, that I'll not get it again. And I'll say to myself, well, this is a choice that all of us have to make as human beings. You do what you think is right, or do you do what you think will allow you to get along? I think that you do what you think is right. That is what you're required to do. Fortunately for me, in this fight, I have great allies. First of all, within my government, 
the people who are in the front line of that, some of, all of them are here. The Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. The Minister for Water Resources and Sanitation. Eminent Ghanaians, responsible Ghanaians, who have gone out of their way to lead this crusade. But from the beginning, they said something, which is the reason why you are here today. We cannot win this fight without the support of the traditional authorities of our country. Any serious social mobilization of, in, of Ghana since time immemorial, if you're not involved, it doesn't happen. If you, the chiefs of our country, are not involved, it doesn't happen. Now, she be your mind to say, say, bra Ghana for a bre. May the minimum no crefu be a war, may more which we didn't say, see, no waka say, a coy or Ghana say, say. Time I hear Cassa and coy or Hana, a mile war, you know, boss here, could devour no miss any man. A two pond and then day. And don't you make us a beer, be a year. Africa and now West Africa and now we are in one money because I don't cry next door to us. A memoir about honor, you will seek a summer of holding a bumunitino French Africa, Kufu de Mika Eco Coco divorce a cock of Pedro Mayo. Nay, dear no. Ghana for you now, which is Ghana for a woman. Ghana's problem is not about resources. Our problem is the efficient and honest management of the resources. When you move back, let me say you see, Kassel. See the liar, hata, 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 hata. I want him to hear me. I don't see a one day to carry any of us all. When you see that, I said to my because he can't know the moon yet. The moon yet, you can see a baby. The baby said, So, you see, 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 the question that you, you, you have to ask is if global, how can global phenomena skip Cote d'Ivoire and all the surrounding countries and only attack Ghana? How? <laughs> how? How does it happen? The question that you, you, you have to ask is if global, how can global phenomena skip Cote d'Ivoire and all the surrounding countries and only attack Ghana? How? <laughs> how? How does it happen? The question that you, you, you have to ask is if global, how can global phenomena skip Cote d'Ivoire and all the surrounding countries and only attack Ghana? How? <laughs> how? How does it happen? The question that you, you, you have to ask is if global, how can global phenomena skip Cote d'Ivoire and all the surrounding countries and only attack Ghana? How? <laughs> how? How does it happen? Man, the name the careful be or what man more which we didn't say see what can say a good year or Ghana say say I am a boy or Ghana it is a castle. A man you hear me? Then I'm a man who are in creation. I come to you. I suspect reviewing means collapsing. That's that's how. That's my understanding. I've heard it being said that uh, oh, I should be careful. These some many of these people voted for me, and if I continue this exercise. Perhaps they will not vote for me again if 
if by the grace of God I'm in, I'm, I, I'm in a position, my party allows me to go again and I have the health and everything to go again, that I'll not get it again. And I'll say to myself, well, this is a choice that all of us have to make as human beings. You do what you think is right, or do you do what you think will allow you to get along? I think that you do what you think is right. That is what you're required to do. Fortunately for me, in this fight, I have... What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Because we choose them. We vote them. We blindly say we are not blind. Who is deceiving who? The ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief. Is it not? But we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. If you reach a certain stage in life and there is nobody who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth you are doomed and that is where our country has got into we need to rescue this country we're lying and i feel very terrible as a Ghanaian at this time this country is in serious trouble ladies and gentlemen we are in serious trouble we need to rescue this country ladies and gentlemen the presidency has been so depraved so so muddied so dirty that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallahi. Inshallah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. Government is broke. Government is broke. The people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my time will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. Um, borrow money of the future and eat it now. Right, hello, good morning and welcome to the show. This is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV. It's a Tuesday, the 9th day of April, 2024. By His grace, we are live and we're here. We are at another edition of the show, our gratitude will go to Most High God for the rare privilege of being alive and of course the opportunity of having another conversation around the top stories making around here in our dear Republic. I'll let you into our panel for the morning's conversation shortly, but let's take a look at the front pages of our newspapers, Daily Graphic. Voters registration May 7 to 27, SAL included in exercise. GRA Commissioner General intervenes, first batch HIV drugs out Friday. As for this country, the thing called shame, we don't have it. We don't have it. Effective justice delivery strategy launch. Framework anchored on tech, speed, and transparency. Greater Accra, RCC endorses GCGL, ZGL sanitation ranking. Ghanaian Times. 40 million US dollars donated drugs locked up at ports. CSO networks appeal for president's intervention. Wage at DVLA generates 8.626,620 in first quarter 2024. Chief Justice launches blueprint to transform judiciary. Nine arrested for peddling fake news about genitals disappearance. Let's unite in rejecting military takeovers. President Kufado to African leaders. 
Well, if you do the right thing, people will not even think about that. Daily Guide. SHS enrollment goes high. Ghana, Guinea, Bissau to open joint commission for cooperation. GRA boss pledges deep client engagement. Let's make VIP president. Baumia launches CJ's leading justice initiatives. The new crusading guide. Ghana records 504,580 SHS enrollment in 2024. Demolishes Legon property. Samira denies her involvement as businessman wails over abuse of state powers. Publish load shedding timetable. ECG told. Ghana's economy is improving. Dr. Addison. Prescribe herbal medicine for treatment. Nana and Ketia advocates. Go for oil policy useful. It shouldn't be cancelled. The insect. We won't tolerate the incessant wanton land grab anymore, Gadangbe Land's administration tells government. Pay us our money before June 30, or we vote against you, aggrieved customers of Kumasi Gold Coast Fund Management Betty Tadbaumia. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. SMG mourns the death of Nigerian labor movement icon Comrade Ali Siroma. KGL Foundation brings Sister Joy to Almina with Easter first foot driver. The Inquisitor. Ladies' desire for NPP running mate, clergy bribed with pilgrimage to Israel. CD dollar depreciation for first four months of 2024 nears 10%. Stop press, fake polls overwhelm Baumi on his running mate as Kamez target Kesben. Afenyo Markin brings honor to Ghana. Charlock backs James Pledge to dissolve sanitation ministry. The Daily Statesman. Record growth in SHS enrollment. Report says free SHS has no compromised quality. Government to launch performance tracker tomorrow. FSIN, no way for any alliance to win December polls. BOG governor cautions against cancellation of gold for oil policy. The new finder. Straight fight between Natoshi and Napu for running mate. Stronghold or swing region. Price flaws to address unhealthy competition, NPA. Ghana, Guinea Bissau forged stronger economic and political ties. President ascends to Wildlife Management Resources Bill 2022. Daily Post. Dangerous religious card played again as Balmier's boy repeats his call on Muslims to vote for him because he's a Muslim. Schools under trees stop debating the number NDC removed and tell us what you have removed. Sami JV to MPP. Joyce Bauer criticizes, criticizes Okufuado's abuse of presidential power and discretion to appoint judges. Minority calls for immediate arrest of the CEO of the Scholarship Secretariat of Alleged Corrupt Act. Economy Times, trade surplus dips. NPA reverses suspension of price stabilization and recovery levy on petroleum products. Government raises cocoa farm gate price by 58%. And that's about it. For the front pages, we'll be back shortly. Stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Frital, a vitamin A fortified oil. Frital, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. 
kitchen rice it's me e emu aduane bia yan sio kakere bi pe emu no nkikam na ne hwam ne ne dadi delicious said your mom e tie no pepe pepe ye the fortune e mo pa abedwa so gana mo a e de ma emu aduane nyina fdi age ejedie nkrato ya to Ye yeah, den jama wo sin kwa na fufo na wo di nru ahuru a ebo me yi nkikaya asro no edi Eye sha Mhm E ma won sa ho nshisho Mhm E na epu ehuru nsu yi Eye nkikaya nkasa Oh, I to be. Eh, me. Ma, the Jamal washing powder for furnace sachets I can see in Noom Abba. Eh, ye in Kikayan Kasa. Ah, Jamal washing powder, bottle 30. Can you ma, the bed you are New Jamal washing powder. Eh, man, you may need tea. Ne musi ye sham. O hoka fu a, o ma won ta di eni tea. FD, a je, a je di enkra to ya tumu. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Yeah, what me? Betway starts strong with your front two, with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a food now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. As you want to see. This address has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. In today's modern world, stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses, and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, the elevator people. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh bread. I'm a fat missy way. The patch of bantama. Much as it. That's a cycle. It's a smile. The fresh bread. Me, GD said we use a Kel 360 toothpaste. Some kind. Kel 360 toothpaste. Let's Kel 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Oh, Nim Jum Kazan Kazan Kazan. In a horse, health 360 did the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. <laughs> And you will see so fine in the car when you know, yeah. Cal 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Cal 360 toothpaste, anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kel, happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. We are back bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Yeah, what me? Betway starts strong with your front two with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a food now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. As you might see. This address has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. To help meet your business and private printing needs successfully, we have just the right products and services. At Appointed Time Printing Limited, we specialize in digital printing, offset printing, packaging, and security printing. Our innovative designs and complete performance 
professional touch on our print products such as posters, flyers, brochures, magazines, call cards, and any other print solution of your choice ensure that our customers are always happily connected to their audience. With our security printing section, our clients are assured of a highly secured and confidential work process from start to finish. At a point in time, our prices are very, very competitive. Locate us at the old GNTC building near Swansea Shopping Arcade, Accra. Contact us on 0501-454165, 0501-454167, appointed time printing limited, our printing as a solution. Welcome to our booth. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. And uh, with me on the show this morning is a man who's still hanging. Huh? <laughs> He's still hanging. We do not know when uh, uh, he will land. But uh, it's quite hopeful. Maybe his colleague here can give him some assurances uh, about when he can land. But, um, well, so he was the CEO of the National Health Insurance Authority. And then he was nominated uh, as Minister of Health. Just before he could uh, go through his vetting, his successor was named, and his successor has taken office. So when you see the newspapers, anytime there's something on NHIA, there is uh, Dr. Abwazi Dacosta. So he's no longer the CEO of the NHIA, and he's also yet to be minister. So he's hanging. There's a wall. In fact, uh, you can describe it as a team wall between the NHI and the Ministry of Health. I don't know where he stands between the two walls, whether uh, he's uh, hanging around one of the pillars or not. I do not know. But um, it's still here. The transition, which is just 10 feet away, has not happened. Uh, Dr. Kuboy is uh, the Minister of Health designate and also the MPP's uh, parliamentary candidate for the Lajukuku constituency. Uh, the Hanging Bernard. Good morning. Anche. I will be the fireman. She's my mother. Good time. Oh, me eight months, very just anyone. Hmm. Eight months. So far, eight months. Straight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, also, also with us on the show this morning is a member of parliament for the South Dai constituency. He's a legal practitioner and also a member of the Public Accounts Committee, uh, the Honorable Roxy Nelson, H.A. De Femako. Uh, good morning. Morning, mm. Doc. How are you? Well, surviving. So why surviving. have you left? I thought Dr. Kuba was a friend. My, my dear friend. So why have my you guys friend. still left him hanging? It's a... Uh, In uh, fact, for the month of... Um, for the month of... March, he, he might not receive a salary. Well... Okay. well he might, he, he's, he's in a situation where he's neither an employee of the NHI... Or the Ministry of Health. No, no, the head, the head of the <laughs> ministry. Anyway, I, I, I sympathize with him, but um, it's nothing personal. The man has a, a young family. Yes, I agree. For that period, because of vetting and I everything agree. too, I agree. he doesn't go to the hospitals yes, to do that. I agree, but that's a collateral damage. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not intended to affect him. Mm. But unfortunately, it's part it of... It is the, the origin of the injunction. 
That's why I'm asking him. So, so when are you releasing him? Uh, but first of all, let me say good morning to my people <laughs> in South Dime, Peki, Pali, Povetongo, and uh, Germany people. Uh, Oko will be released when uh, when the court says he should be released. Oko. Uh, but I thought, court, I thought the court is giving parliament the go ahead. No, 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 no. The court hasn't said anything like that. No, I'm the, not saying the, the court, court has said. Yes. I'm just, by the, the implication, what I'm saying is that mm. what, and I'm a non lawyer, yes. so I need to be careful. Yes. What, the, what parliament relied on yes. to put a hold, to put mm. the, the approval on hold, mm. has been taken out of the way by the courts. You know. How? No. So let me explain. Mm. Parliament rely on two things. Uh, the writ as far as well as the, 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 the interlocutory the application for the grant of interlocutory injunction. Mm -hmm. So the removal of one uh, does not uh, empower Parliament to proceed with the matter. Until the final determination. Oh, this one, you are shifting the. Weapons. I'm not shifting because you see, as part of my prayer, it's uh, not about your prayer. I'm not talking about your case yes, in court. Yes. I'm talking about Parliament. We had a speaker. Yes. And the speaker tried to draw a parallel between the position of the president. Yes. And then his yes. position. Yes. And the parallel you can draw really has Doc, to do with. Doc, the, I understood yes. what you asked. Yes. But I'm trying to explain how it works. Mm. The writ, the matter, the substantive case is still pending. Mm. And as part of my prayer before the court, it's the grant of perpetual injunction. Mm. You know? But until it's granted. Good. Yes. Good. So until it's granted, status quo until it must be maintained. No. No? No. No? The but status... The I, am, I am happy you say you are not a lawyer. Yes. So... So, 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 I'm not a lawyer, but... Yes. You won't bully me. I'm not bullying now, you at all. Now, the president yes. did not refer to um, the case before the court. He referred to the application for no. He actually referred injunction. to the case. The no. case means the case means the writ. No, I'm saying plus, that. I'm saying that yes. in the letter. Yes. The cease and desist letter. Yes. The president referred to the application for yes. injunction. Yes. And said that mm. it, it it was a tried knowledge in law mm. that mm. once a process like that had uh, been initiated, we all stay off yes. until yes. decided by the courts. Yes. The speaker yes. disagreed with the president. Yes. But of course, as they say, idiocy for idiocy. Yes. If we were to go by your logic, yes. then I've also been informed that yes. There is also an injunction. Yes. And so we're also going to stay off our hands. Good. Okay. All right. Now I'm saying that yeah. on the basis of that, mm. the injunction for which reason mm. the speaker said we can't proceed mm. on the basis of the president's logic mm. has been thrown out. It wasn't thrown out. The injunction. Yes. The application for injunction. Yes. It wasn't granted. Yes, but it doesn't mean it was thrown out. So it wasn't granted. Okay. Uh huh. Mm. So it wasn't granted. So that impediment mm. no longer exists. Okay. So, but I'm saying yes. that you are wrong in that regard. Why? Because as part of my main prayers before the court, yes. it's a prayer for the grant of perpetual injunction. Uh -huh. So until the final determination of the matter. Perpetual injunction on parliament. Yes, director of parliament. Not to, not to proceed yes. with the vetting yes. further. Of the ministers, the nominees presented to parliament mm. until the requirements under Article 70. And 70. Like my, my case is a very simple matter. I will find it extremely difficult. Yes. If not very strange. Yes. If the speaker yes. decides to, mm. decides to mm. um, use this reason mm. as a decision not to continue with the process, why, why would that be so? Because, you see, we all have... You see, speaker. the Attorney General, that is why the Attorney General has applied for expeditious area of the matter. The expeditious hearing of the matter is not limited to the application or notice for the grant of interlocutory induction alone. Mm -hmm. it, it refers to the entire matter. So, I, so my hope now is for the Supreme Court to proceed to hear that matter expeditiously. Now, that is your matter. Yeah, that 
but in, in terms of parliament doing this work, you yes. see, two things have happened. Yes. One, the Amanda Audrey case. Yes. Whilst you are second reading, yes. she went yes. to the Supreme Court. Yes. The Supreme Court says that parliament cannot be stopped. You cannot injunct uh -huh. in parliament. Now you yes. have also tried to injunct parliament. Yes. The Supreme Court says and it that you cannot. And it failed. So what, on what legs would the speaker say that parliament shouldn't do his work? Ah, because the matter is before court. The matter is sub -judice. Which precedence is that? The matter ah, was before. Listen, let me, give you, let me give you. Hold on. Hold you see, just hold you on. See, you, the, the of, you are speaking yes. of motions. Yes. Motions brought on notice to as it were in the interim mm -hmm. hold the hands of parliament at bay. Yes. And the Supreme Court says you cannot do that. Yes. But it does not preclude parliament from saying that until the Supreme Court determines the matter on its merits, yes. we will not proceed. Parliament cannot say that because... Why can't Parliament First say of that? all, yes. in the case of the Amanda Audrey, yes. there was a substantive matter. Yes. And she went for an interim measure. Yes. And the Supreme Court's position was that mm. you can't stop Parliament from doing its legislative work. Okay. So clear that out of it. Okay. You also yeah. went to the Supreme Court yes. with a substantive matter. You've asked this matter three times. But also... Asked for an interim similar, measure. Similar yes. relief. And, and the Supreme Court was consistent. Yes. That you cannot yes. prevent Parliament from doing yes. this work. Yes. So on what basis would the Speaker say that I cannot continue doing my work? On the basis that the matter is pending before. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not sure the Speaker will even do that. Oh, well, I'm but, not sure. but, but I'll raise it on the floor. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm, no, you can raise it. That's I'll raise it on the floor. Because, because you see, sure because you see, I am saying that the president in making these nominations act constitutionally. No, that matter will be heard. No, yeah. it's not about that matter will be heard. Yeah. That is the government of the matter. Yes. So if the Supreme Court determines the matter tomorrow mm -hmm. and says that the, the basis upon which I came before them is correct and therefore the appointments should be reversed or that the president should comply with with the with the requirements under Article 70 and 79. You don't think that a grave injustice would have an occasion to me? And and also that these 23 or 22 ministers of state would have gone on to occupy office unconstitutionally. So this this on the balance of the conveniences and the probabilities. I believe that we must all stay our hands until the matter is expeditiously. I didn't bring the application for expeditious hearing. Is that is the attorney general who has done that? So 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 when is the when is the Supreme Court hearing the Richie Sky matter? I, I'm not a Supreme Court with all due respect. No, so you're you're a lawyer. That's yes, right. but, you're but a, a request has gone from the the, the speaker's council mm -hmm. requesting for expeditious hearing um uh, interestingly um, no no official communication or has been issued from the registry of the court um unlike in my case so we wait till the supreme court decides to um list that matter for hearing expeditiously in, in that sense well per, 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 per how the supreme court is ruled in those two cases yeah. i mean yeah, this should. I mean, it should a, give a. I mean, it's, 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 yes, the, giving the direction of the court. I hope that is not the reason why we're having delays. Anyway, yes. Anyway, okay. No. So good morning to my brother Oko boy. No, <laughs> Oko. How are you? So sorry? Oko. So listening to him, left to him alone. Until the determination of the matter, you should hang. Mm. You see, it's not Oko that is hanging. It, it, it's, no, it's because Oko this, is here. These are the constitutional checks. Mm. That I, I, I am bringing to bear on the president. Mm. Look, this whole problem was created by Ijinahin. If Ijinahin had communicated properly, okay, so, don't, so communicated, don't, so don't, the, don't, the, don't, don't blame him. No, I have to blame him. Okay, I said you don't see, blame because, him because because you see, I made the point on the 9th of the 14th of February. Mm. I indicated that. Eugene should be called upon to correct the communication if that is not the true intent of the president. Because if you don't do that after, after 30 days, I will sue. Mm -hmm. So I, gave, I put them on notice. And I said this on some other, sisters, uh, 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 other media platform. Mm. So I was hoping that they would have come out to say that the communication was made in error. 
You have seen other appointments and releases regarding other appointments by the president. Why haven't those persons been revoked, first of all, before we are signed? Mm. As it were. So, there was something fundamentally wrong with that communication. And you see, J.H. Mensah huh? told J.J. Rollins in 1997, uh, especially the, the late Vincent Assisi, mm. when they sought to explain that, oh, they are, they, they are the public announcement regarding those former ministers was made in error. J.H. Mensah said in constitutional governance, there's nothing like miscommunication. Mm. You make you make a public announcement in respect of the operation of the constitution and that's it. If a person is aggrieved, the person must go to the Supreme Court for for, for interpretation. All right, okay. So you know so, okay, I've just got a text there. There's a there's a group they say prayer warriors for Kobay. <laughs> and and that you shouldn't worry. And that they are praying. They are praying led by a lady, Ad Adelaide. And I saw yes. it is the kind of prayer God wants to hear, not these guys' prayers. Yeah. So so pray he, the he's praying to the court. Yeah, can you imagine? Uh, he's praying to man. Uh, pray to man. <laughs> you see, no, no, you see, Lord, we call them my lost temporal. <laughs> <laughs> so my prayers are before my lost uh, temporal. Lord, Lord, who go on retirement? Uh, God, yeah, he always there. My lost uh, temporal. <laughs> so the, 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 the uh, and my lost spiritual. Yes, the, that prayer is to my lost the spiritual. The prayer warriors, I should tell you not to worry. So, uh, I mean, catch a way. Okay, so I'm sorry, I have to I have to watch my this time. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for a toothpaste that will take care of all the family and save money, the recommended family toothpaste is Kel 360 toothpaste. It's approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Kel 360 toothpaste provides you and your family with all round dental protection throughout the day with freshness. Kel 360 toothpaste is good for kids, children, and adults. Let your Family be a proud family when they step out by constantly using Kel 360 toothpaste. Kel 360 toothpaste brightens your teeth, prevents cavity, and with its cool means gives you fresh breath throughout the day and protects the gum from decaying. For consistency and quality, use Kel 360 toothpaste. Kel 360 toothpaste is another product from Samara Company Limited, <coughs> sorry, producers of Sasu, and is available in all supermarkets, malls, and provision shops. Call Samara Company on 246 Eight six four seven nine eight. Kel three sixty toothpaste. Happy smile, and enjoying the fruits of your labor is as important as enjoying the mansions of your labor. The pains of climbing the stairs when not exercising could be challenging for all ages. But worry no more. Lift and elevators have got you covered with the best portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators on the market today. It is a simple self-supported elevator for both homes and offices. And guess what? It can lift your goods too. Wheelchairs can fit in and they come in three custom-made models. It's affordable and can be installed within three days. Visit Lift and Elevators. As a common or just call them on 200 or send a mail to elevatorsgh at gmail.com for consultations and the best solutions in easy vertical movement. All right. So, um, uh, Council, you're on the Public Accounts Committee. Yes. Okay. Now, I came across this report by Komla Kluche of TV3. I want to play that report, and then I'll take your views, since you're on the committee, and then the views of uh, Dr. Koboy as well. Welcome. The state of the project estimated at 993 million United States dollars. Government claims this would be the single largest investment ever made in a northern part of the country. But nearly five years after a colorful sword cutting ceremony, no major work has been done as a contractor has abandoned the project site. It is emerging that government in 2021 paid Chinese contractors MS Power China 11.9 million US dollars. Well, it is clear, despite the payment made by the central bank on behalf of the state, there's no evidence of the work. Government in the same vein has made payment 2.57 million US dollars to Motor Angels Contract Cow for the construction of expansion works on the Kra Tema Motorway. It has emerged that there is no evidence of work done as 
Currently, the contractor on the motorway is MS Maripoma. The Public Accounts Committee is enraged at the payment as the auditors have been asked to go back and do further details on the work. So clearly for this government, it's all about payments to companies for no work done. Then the same people will turn around and blame COVID-19, and blame Russia and Ukraine, and blame all kinds of things, and not blame themselves for making these huge payments. And I'm mentioning dollars. If you convert it to cities at the current exchange rate, then we are talking about over 160 uh, 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 billion. Why should we continue doing that to ourselves? The committee is expecting the auditors to return to the committee in a week's time with further details on the payment. They would have had water to be able to do dry season uh, farming, and they would need not come down to seek for non-existing jobs. And some of them ends up either being molested and being treated in ways that is dehumanizing. This government is a no-no government. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Accra. So that's uh, Komla Kluche of TV3's uh, report on the Auditor General's report currently before the Public Accounts Committee. Roxin, is that a true reflection of what is contained in the report and what transpired at your committee? That is so. So give, give us a bit of a background. Let's appreciate what the issues are. Yes, um, so yesterday we convened as a committee to invite um, three institutions, especially the controller and accountant general, regarding the report submitted by the auditor general concerning its work for 2022. It was quite an extensive consideration. So after that, the Bank of Ghana also appeared. The governor himself, for the first time in a long time, um, came with his two deputies. The first deputy and the second deputy were all uh, with him. Some departmental heads. It was in respect of his is performance of the report conducted by the Auditor General for the, for the fiscal year 2022. And so we asked him to take us to the essential portions of the report. And two remarkable things happened that are, uh, for instance, if you look at our uh, asset, asset, asset and liability status, it moved from in 2021, we moved from 459 billion to 810 billion in 2022. Then members focused on some payments that were affected from the Bank of Ghana to some entities. Now, as part of these payments, we noted two major things. You know the Pualugu Dam, Pualugu Multi-Purpose Dam, was uh, repackaged by, or the Pualugu Dam was repackaged by government and awarded on contract for about $958 million to be constructed as a multi-purpose dam, which will serve as a storage of as a reservoir to store water from the, the black water and also serve as a irrigation uh, facility for farmers in the, in the catchment area of the dam. So that's how come they named it multi-purpose dam. Now, after about four or five years of the award of that contract, the evidence on the ground, in situ, if you go to the ground, if you go in situ, is that there's nothing happening. There's nothing happening at all. The communication is always way. Now, I sit here, use medical terms sometimes, how are you? So, we were, we were struck 
we all it, it struck all of us as odd to see as much as eleven point something million dollars paid to a contractor for supposedly doing some work on what they labeled Hualugu irrigation project. Because you see, the, the irrigation project is the same as the Pualugu multi-purpose dam. And the dam hasn't been constructed, even though it's been given on contract. So in order not to belabor the point, we asked, for, we asked the auditors what they saw. We, we found out from the governor on what basis these monies were paid. And the governor explained that. He couldn't tell because um, it must have been documents provided to his uh, bank for payments to be made. And so he simply effected the payment. So then the focus of the committee shifted to the auditors to find out what sort of documents they saw um, which justified the payment. You know, the auditors who appear, who accompany us on our, on our journey anytime we interrogate these matters, are actually not those who do the work. It's their subordinates, junior staff, sometimes line managers, regional directors, and all. These are the people who come are normal assistants, auditor generals, and all that. So they have promised to go back, get the documents, and provide us with copies because it is when we get those documents that we we'll appreciate what what occasioned the payment of the eleven point three million dollars or so. Because we wanted to find out who even certified the work. Because you see, work amount of that nature and the civil works involved, an engineer will have to certify that the work had truly totally been done in a mid standard. And all that, you know, all those things that we do as part of quality checks in civil construction. So we are waiting for the document justifying the payment. Then also, like you hinted earlier, we saw some two point something million payment to my, um, um, uh, uh, this company on, regarding the motorway. And the motorway, we all know nothing has been done in respect of it. Uh, and so that too, we've, we requested for some documentation to justify that payment to, uh, after it's, I think it's a Portuguese name, uh, I've forgotten the name of the Mota Angels. Mota Angels, yes. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, there was one other payment. So there are three requests that we, we demanded from the Bank of Ghana and the Auditor General's Office to provide us with further and better particulars so we can properly interrogate this matter. So preliminary, these are uh, matters that uh, came before us, as captured in the performance audit report mm -hmm. um, uh, conducted by the Auditor General of the Bank of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> no. today, today we'll be interrogating the, the Kukuru's audit report. Today? Yes, today. So you must, you must, your, you must your listen this to thing us. Is, is live only on uh, Parliament. Uh, we've been, we've been, uh, I, I think the problem with GTV. Parliament Facebook page, right? Yes. We've been, I, I don't know what the problem is with GTV not covering this live anymore. It, it's, it's so painful that the national activity of this nature, GTV won't have. So today's Kokoros. Yeah, today's Kokoros. Okay. Okay. You okay. can even come and listen. <laughs> Mm. You should do a podcast. I mean, them current. Do a podcast and let us have it. Okay. Advice well taken. Exactly. Doc, uh, let me say a very good morning. Honorable to Minister you. of Health in abeyance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very soon. Okay, good morning to mm. <clears throat> Honorable Makwata, former Rose Minister. Uh, you know, he started some works in my constituency. Or I met him a couple of weeks ago. Yes. He's also a member of the He's now looking very young. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him it was special. He was present yesterday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so, I want to appreciate him as we speak. All those at Maryville, uh, there's a lot of works uh, happening in that particular enclave. 
and at the same time, you have a lot of work also uh, towards the beach road. Uh, those watching from Lejukuku, they would speak to the Manfi to go on a school road, asphalting and all that. So we, we have to show gratitude. Because there was a time when myself, I made some spirited advocacy. And uh, some of my constituents even uh, took to the streets. Okay. Uh, okay one minute. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I'm informed that yesterday GTV actually carried it live. So let me. Was it throughout? Up well, to a point. Well, I'm told okay. that yesterday. So, 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 yes. so we can be. So, sure want to urge them, them to continue. Okay. Right. So, Doc, I want to thank the former minister and uh, my brother, Honorable Asenso, uh, the current or new rules minister, has also uh, taken it on strongly. Is it the current? Is it the current rules, rules minister? No, oh, he's the current rules minister. He's not. Oh, look, Jalen. He's not. He's the rules minister. I've been caught against that. He's not. So, <laughs> uh, okay, 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 okay. That's where the, the issue of... Uh, I, I get him. I get him. Uh, uh, I get him. That is his, his prayer. Okay. Has the prayer been granted? Um, not yet. So can I call, can I call assent to the rules minister? No. Please, I don't, want to, I don't want to attempt to assume the role of a guy. I'll go with you down the line. <laughs> but, look, so, mm -hmm. I want to appreciate Asenso, um, Honorable Asenso Bantama MP. He's uh, giving indications that very soon you come to the community to um, give some support to the contractors and assure them of uh, remuneration uh, so that they can continue with the good works. Um, having said so, let me also greet uh, Honorable, Right Honorable Speaker, Abam Bagwin. You know, he's, uh, he's my father. So, uh, his children are calling on him to come around. Yeah? <laughs> Look, you know, with this uh, um, payment uh, issue, I think over the years we've had this culture where when issues come before the Public Accounts Committee, Sometimes we are tempted to take the issues that are raised as, as the end of the story. And look, sometimes it can be unfair to the actors involved. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing to throw light on events that happen at public places where our monies are used. It is a good thing to discuss them. It's a good thing to query or scrutinize those uh, uh, transactions. But I think we also have a duty to remind viewers and ourselves that most of these issues are flagged issues. Flagged means that on the surface they look like aberrations or things which are not normal. But sometimes when you go behind and investigate further, uh, either um, there is wrong which is done that is even prosecutable. Sometimes you, you find a situation where what has happened is not the usual thing, but it's not of, uh, an offensive conduct that deserves punishment. Sometimes you even realize that even the reportage or the capturing based on information available at that time is what created that impression and that was subsequent information the impression you see now is not really the case. So, with all these things, I usually say that we should uh, be cautious in our, uh, how do we call it, our judgments. Um, and uh, having said all this, I give my full support to the Public Accounts Committee. Uh, as a country, um, we must send a strong signal, whether MPP or NDC is in power, that those who get the privilege of handling public office are not above the law. They are not above board and they are subject to scrutiny. Um, I think we've mentioned two issues here with the uh, motorway, the, the, the Portuguese uh, company mentioned. I mean, yeah, motor angels. Yes, motor angels. I mean, as a Ghanaian, if I'm told that 
we pay two point something million dollars for no work done. My first and natural instinct to be, I mean, I mean, why? And Already we paid two million dollars for a sky train. Yeah, zero. And we we'll keep our focus. So uh, I know that <laughs> my chair. I know that uh, the committee will do a good job. It's Honorable Veggie is the chair, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And Honorable Veggie too, you know, he has a solid record, uh, a very renowned, uh, is it chartered accountant? So I don't have any fears. I know that we'll go to the battle of the matter. But my only advice is that we should not hang people before we, we go through the whole matter. Yeah. Mm. All right, okay, so let's, let's come to something which is about health. And uh, Coalition of CSO Networks in HIV, TB, and Malaria um, held a presser and they've issued a statement. And we'll, we'll be speaking with them uh, uh, this morning. And uh, they say that um, uh, they intend petitioning President and Parliament on continued lack of global fund donated health commodities at Tema uh, Port. And we're told that these commodities are valued at more than $40 million, and they've been wasting away at the port since May 2023. Since May 2023. And uh, so that's um, 11 months. And they comprise antiretrovirals for treatment of HIV, medications for treatment of TB, artemisinin-based combination therapy, ACTs for the treatment of malaria, insecticide-treated nets, rapid diagnostic kits, uh, test kits, and... Uh, Gene experts, cartridges, among others. And they say the situation has currently created stockouts in health facilities across the country, leading to needless loss of lives and frustration for health workers. Now, what are the issues? The Global Fund has since 2002 supported Ghana's national response against HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria to the tune of more than $1.2 billion. These funds are made available to the country in cycles of three years. For example, for Grand Cycle 6, which was implemented between 2021 and 2023, Global Fund supported the country with about $250 million. For Grand Cycle 7, which is to be implemented from this year to 2026, the Global Fund has earmarked $248 million for the country. Between May and August, Global Fund, as part of its commitment, uh, shipped items uh, worth about $40 million into the country. In line with regular practice, Global Fund made available $400,000 being 1% of the value of the commodities to cover procurement and supply management costs. However, at the time the commodities arrived, the government of Ghana informed Global Fund that the amount of $400,000 will not be sufficient for the clearance due to increase in poor charges. This was coupled with the fact that Parliament had failed to grant waivers for AU ECOWAS and COVID-19 recovery levies. Uh, and according to government, the required amount in taxes, levies, and poor charges for the clearance of the commodities will be $3.6 million. The Global Fund raised concerns about this amount <clears throat> and reminded government that as per the framework agreement between the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Finance, and the Global Fund, they are not supposed to pay taxes and levies on commodities they donate freely to the country. They also pointed to their relations with other countries where they do not pay such levies and taxes. Regrettably, government insisted on the payment, and this is what led to the deadlock in the clearance process which has festered till date. As we speak, we are not sure of the storage conditions of these commodities. We are not sure whether these delicate commodities are being sheltered under the right temperatures or they are being exposed to the vagaries of the weather. Our greatest fears are that if no action is taken now, by the time the medications are cleared, some may have either expired or may no longer be safe for human consumption. And in March 2024, a 12-member delegation from the Global Fund paid a working visit to the country to follow up on the locked-up commodities. In spite of all the efforts, they did not make any headway, and the commodities still remain uncleared at the ports. They have therefore indicated that Ghana risks losing all global fund support if government fails to act on the matter. To start with, they've already suspended all commodity shipments to the country until the ones at the ports are cleared. And they speak about the dire consequences. I've heard some of them speak about the number of people who die every day, TB and all those things. Now, um, you, you are not yet uh, in the chair, but I know that you, your shadows hang around the place and all that. <laughs> now, um, on the face of this, this sounds extremely ridiculous. Yeah. That you are gifted $40 million worth of um, health products 
for malaria, for TB, for um, uh, how do you call it, uh, HIV. HIV, and all that. And then you say that duties will cost three point six. Already, they say there's a framework agreement. Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Health, Global Fund. And that framework agreement states that they are not supposed to pay any taxes or levies because these are gifts. They are giving it to you for free. But they add 1% million, 1 for maybe some charges that may come. So in this case, $400,000. And we say that no. If we calculate the charges at the port, it will come to $3.6 million. This is revenue to the state. $3.6 million. And so the $400,000 will not be enough. They insist that, well, they do not have any arrangement to make them pay any extra money beyond the 1%. For this reason, the $40 million worth of all these um, um, commodities for all these ailments have been at the port for 11 months. Why so? <coughs> Look, so... Um, let me say that the Global Fund has been a very uh, supportive partner. I mean, to Ghana. And as you read, committing over a billion dollars to our healthcare uh, needs and system. To be honest with you, in as much as legislation and protocols and other things are being mentioned as the cause for this delay, I believe strongly that this could have been avoided. Does, Doc, this could have been avoided if the sector heads and scheduled officers in the different ministries, I'm talking about um, finance, health, and which other, other agencies are connected, were beyond what is on paper, talking to each other frequently and consistently on this matter. This should have been resolved long time ago. So, I mean, although I have not been sworn in, I just asked a week ago, I think, yes, a week or two ago, I spoke to the chief diet. I'm like, well, what is this about? Because they came to see me. The, the 12 member delegation. Yeah, the, the, in fact, not the whole 12 member, but the leader, the country coordinating mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, a rep of the Global Fund came to see me. And I told them, I mean, these are things that matters that should be resolved quickly. So, um, it was subsequent to my engagement with the Global Fund rep that I put forward these questions. And before I even came there, these things were things I had heard about. So, the chief director told me that they had written to finance, for finance to try and uh, take a look at the tax waivers and all that. Apparently, they worked on it speedily. Yesterday, I happened to be at finance to, uh, to see um, Honorable Amin Anta. And whilst there, um, one, my aide sent me a post by one of the media houses that this containers issue is still brewing. So I asked Chief Director, the Chief Director, the last I want to ask you, said this thing was going to be resolved. Luckily, because we're in finance, they brought their schedule officer in charge. They said, oh, they've had a meeting with the acting commissioner general and that everything has been more or less resolved. And, and, and that a statement. And I said, whatever you are doing, nobody in Ghana knows about it. Current uh, modern governance has to do with timely release of information. Whatever you are doing is not for you. So, Doc, it was, it, it's actually following our engagements yesterday that made the GMA, uh, GRE release uh, um, the information that is captured in the graphic as well as other electronic uh, media. Bottom line, a lot of efficiency must be brought to bear when it comes to um, the processes that lead to clearance of these goods. They don't need to write to parliament. Now that it's been resolved. And look, it's been resolved even, even at the executive level. Talk about heads of agencies and all that. It is usually when the executive level fails to act in terms of, I'm talking about agency heads or ministers, that you can escalate to um, parliament. Apparently, the excuse was that if parliament passed a levy and they've not granted a waiver, it's supposed to be enforced. But 
what have we done now? What we've done now is to use administrative, uh, I will not say discretion, but administrative uh, uh, authority to set the levy aside and let the goods uh, pass. It also, it, it also means that we could have done this some months ago. But the global fund, you yeah. know, where I get a bit worried is, is this part, that beyond all of this, you know, and beyond all of this, uh, we're told that the threat to suspend in March yeah. 2024, a 12-member delegation from the Global Fund paid a working visit to the country to follow up on the locked-up commodities. Yeah. In spite of all their efforts, they did not make any headway. The commodities still remain uncleared at the ports. And they've indicated that Ghana risks losing all the Global Fund. Yeah, doc, doc, yes. I mean, when it comes to these partners, they, they, they watch your posture. I mean, we, we, we work, we deal with institutions, not personalities. Yes. But they also watch the posture and the attitude of those running the ministry or the... Yes. I think, uh, looking at what has happened, I don't see some high level of energies uh, when it comes to the collaboration, not, if not the... No, this, is obviously the this is obviously the, the attitude yeah. of a country that does not require these things. Because if really yeah. you require this, um, um, and you are the health practitioner, yeah. I mean, the fact that these things have been even at the port for close to a year, 11 months. But, not say 11 months. I mean, how do you mm. explain this? You say you don't have money. Yeah. A global fund gives you $40 million worth of consumables and medications for critical things. That you, you require. I was, I was listening to the stats on how many people die as a result of TB per day and all that. You know? And you have these things at the ports. They add $400,000 uh, to you. You say that duties have gone up, so it's now $3.6 million. So they should come and top up $3.2 million. Otherwise, the thing should be at the port and, and perish. And you have a deficit all across your hospitals. You don't have these medications. Even if you had to pay yourself, it's your revenue. Even if you had to take 3.2 million to go and pay the duties, to clear the 40 million dollars worth of... Yeah. I mean, Look, uh, if you were part of the global fund, is this a country that you even think about? No, so, I mean, um, I mean the, the point I'm making is that these are matters that should interfere to this level and um all i can invite anyway you know <laughs> so going forward i think um the relationship is going to be stronger these matters would would uh, be a thing of the past the commitment levels must be high and you know i was at ministry of finance myself on some issues. Hardly would a finance minister see a sector, a colleague sector minister coming to deal on such matters and ignore or be lukewarm. I suspect, like I said, I, I'm, I'm being careful with words. I don't want to seem like I'm indicting anybody, but the level of energy and spirited collaboration, intersectorial, I mean. Hey, are you a sector minister? Oh. <laughs> 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 the, Randy wants solutions. Mm. So, yes, I agree. Randy, I agree. all this while I'm saying, I'm going to go here. 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 I'm going to go that's good yeah. advice. Mm. This is one of the mm. very uh, yeah. now, good advice. Okay. So, Doc, I, I think the point I'm making is that a solution has been uh, carved. Um, Will people be held responsible? Oh, Doc. Um, so, see, let's say if there's a medication that has an expiry date of maybe two years. And by the time it's cleared yeah. and distributed, maybe another 12, 13 months are gone. But, Doc, I don't, I don't want to go into the details might seem like I'm either 
indicting someone or escorting. Yeah, but will somebody be held responsible? No, no, my, my point is that even on the surface, the, the technical person. Who you, you know, why I ask this. Before any shipment is made to Ghana, Ghana will be aware. Yeah. When the shipment even takes place, we'll be aware. Because all the bill of lading and all those things. So we'll even be aware. We'll know when the goods will arrive at the port and all that. If there is anything to be done, already there's a framework agreement existing. Okay. That's where reason must overwhelm. You have a step There's a new leg. You have to say to the past. My book tells you you have to pay a different amount of money for the thousand dollars. You have to pay three million dollars. And then those officers who are having it from help say that. No, but this is the money that has been allocated. No, if someone from the top doesn't take up the okay. issue. Yeah, just hold on. I've been told okay. that we have a small technical thing. Okay. So yeah, just hold on. We'll take a quick break and then resolve that and come back. It's good to stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Phytol, a vitamin A fortified oil. Phytol, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. Fortune rice, it's me a mu e diane biara. Yan sioka karebi pe, a munan ki kamu. Nani ham nene de di. Delicious. Said ye ma metia no pepe pe. Ye de fortune emu pa abejaso. Gana mua e de. Ma emu e diane nina. FD aje e je di enkra tu e yatu. This is a call to you. The dreamers. The ones that see no boundaries. Dreamers take a chance. The explorers that chart their own path. Along the vibes connect the energy. The ones that dare to challenge the status quo. Get connected, feel the vibes. When others try to think outside the box, you wonder what box. Catch the wave, enjoy the ride. To the architects of their journeys. Oh. Every connection is an opportunity to explore every experience. This is your call to adventure. Your journey begins here. Be bold. Be daring. Be free. Connecting passions. Connecting dreams. Connecting ambitions. Telesel. Connecting energies. Anti-cavity. Dumb protection. Brighter tea and fresh bread. I'm off at Missy Way. We're part of Bantama. Much as it. That's a cycle. It's a smile. The fresh breath. Me, GD said we use a Kel 360 toothpaste. Some me kind. Kel 360 toothpaste. Yes, Kia. Kel 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. What name is Jum Kazan Kazan Kazan? What is the whole thing? Kel 360 did the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. And you will see so feeling you can win in a year. Cal 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Cal 360 toothpaste. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Cal, happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. In today's modern world, Stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of 
of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses, and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, The Elevator People. We are back bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Betway starts strong with your front two with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a food now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you want to see. have been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. How is your intention? To be honest, I'm so nervous about starting this new world on Monday. Oh, please. I know you'll be great at it. You should be worried about what benefits they have. Example, do they have health insurance? I doubt they will have that for internet. But no shaking. I have NHIs already. I see I'm still aligned. Sing, sing, sing. Hey, now. Look at you. What are you going to do in your office when you can just download your app to register for an NHIs membership? Yes, my people. You heard right. You can now download and register your membership on my NHIS app. No long queues or tedious paperwork. All you need is your Ghana card to register for yourself and for others. Once you register, you get a new digital NHIS card on your phone. My NHIS app gives you access to credentialed health facilities and services across the country. NHIS covers over 95% of disease conditions in Ghana. Access to healthcare just got easier. Now let me sign up quickly. Miss Seth, I'm starting work next month. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, I seem to be. Eh, uh, me. <laughs> Ma, the Jamal washing powder for furnace sachets I can see in Noom Abba. Eh, ye in Kikaya Ankasa. Ah, ni ma. For Jamal washing powder, but of 30, can you ma ode be jiawari? Eh, Jamal. New Jamal washing powder. Eh, ma, ni me niti. Ne mousu ye sham. O hon kafu a, o ma won ta di ye niti. FD, aji, e dre di enkra atro yatu mu. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Still with me on the show, I have Dr. Bernard Okoboy and um, a legal practitioner who's uh, trying very hard to prevent uh, Dr. Okoboy from being approved. Um, Roxy Nelson, the Femaco. Now, what does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember, I was got a mola, got the park. Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on our Dome TV at 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. daily. Now pick up your phones, tablets, and computers and download the Game Park Games app on Play Store. You can also play on the website at www.gameparkgames.com or by dialing star 946 has on all networks. Just choose four numbers from 0 to 9. It's easy to play and easy to win. Charlie, make play this game and make some mola. Nobody beats our out in Ghana. Game Park Games, more mola, more power. This game is regulated by a national lottery authority and it's not for persons under 18. Play responsibly. Ayesoku, that could some more damn be big, but Betway's cash out be bigger. Betway is giving you more control over every thrilling bet you place. Enjoy the biggest and most reliable cash out in Ghana on Betway without any hassle. Sign up today at betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply, not for persons under 18. This is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Betway gets way more. And Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been on the Ghanaian market for over 20 years. We already know what it does for the body. It contains vitamins and nutrients like vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, as well as taurine and guarana, which are known to boost your strength and energy as well as promote high performance and endurance. 
Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been tested and tried. It's indeed the best. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is for bold and active men and women. So go on, grab a cold can and power your day. It's in shops nationwide. For bulk purchases, contact Budget Cash and Carry Limited on 208 one two eight one nine zero or zero five five zero zero one zero 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 zero. All right. So let me come to you on this uh, development with the global fund. Uh, quite shameful. Disturbing. Yes. Disturbing. Quite worrying. Doc, we have a we have a statutory solution for this problem. Statutory. Yes. Okay. Which is Parliament enacted what we call the Tax Exemptions Act, mm-hmm. 2022 Act 1083, mm-hmm. and in that law, we set criteria for entities that will qualify for exemptions in matters such as this. Look, with your permission, let me read section one of the law. It says. The object of this act is to a provide for an exemptions regime and the scope of exemptions. B set criteria for exemptions. C provide for the administration of exemptions. And D provide for monitoring, evaluation, reporting, and enforcement of exemptions. Section two says section two one says this act applies to all exemptions. Now 2.2 says this act shall be read together with any other enactment relevant to taxes, levies, rates, duties, fees, charges, and public financial management. Three, where there is a conflict or inconsistency between the provisions of this act and any other enactment related to exemptions, the provisions of this act shall prevail. Now, Section 2 4 says this act is a tax law for purposes of the Revenue Administration Act 2016, Act 915. Section 3 of the law, Doc, mm. says definition of exemption. Section 3 1 says for the purposes of this act, an exemption is a, a waiver or variation of a tax, levy, rate, duty, fee or charge provided for under an enactment, or B, a variation of the timing of the payment of a tax, levy, rate, duty, fee, or charge, which results in a reduction in the effective liability of the payer. Section 3.2 says, despite subsection 1, the power of the Commissioner General to remit assessed tax or extend the date on which a tax is payable shall continue to apply. Now, Doc, if we go to section 12 of the law, it says that donor and charity organizations, so this is where we come in. This is where this matter comes in. Section 12 one says, an item for A, educational purposes, and B, health purposes, imported by a development partner, a charity organization, a philanthropist, or any other not-for-profit organization as a gift for charitable purposes is subject to subsection 2, exempt from customs duties and custom taxes where the application is supported by a recommendation by the relevant sector minister and approved by the minister. Now, here is what the two says. An application for the exemption referred to in subsection 1 shall not be processed unless the application is made by the official head of the identifiable group that benefits from the gift. And B, spells out in detail the specific items and the quantity of each item expected in the donation. So, Doc, the solution is that the agencies or the communities or the ent- local entities that will benefit from this consignment are supposed to apply to the Minister of Health for a tax exemption pursuant to Section 12 of the Exemptions Act 2022, Act 1083. Now, when they do that, 
the Minister of Health will have to approve the application. And then it will be referred to the Minister of Finance for final authorization. This is the procedure. So I don't see why we, are, we haven't followed this procedure in getting these items from the port. It's a very simple procedure if you understand the processes. So, um, in addition to what doctor said, I think Dr. Oko's point is too laborious for me. This is the applicable law. So, the entities that will benefit, we need to identify them. Once we identify them, then they will apply to the ministry. Then the minister will approve of it. Once the approval comes, it, it goes to the Minister of Finance for authorization. Then the things can be taken out of the port. And you see... Ah, there's a development which even makes it like here. Yeah. I've just seen this on page 13 of Daily Graphic. Yeah. Now it says, GRA Commissioner General intervenes. First batch HIV drugs out on Friday. And this story filed by Julia T. Chan, suffering just financial risk. The first batch of drugs for the fight against HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria is expected to lead to Nepal by close of the week. Mm. In all 12... Mm -hmm. Bills of lading of the pharmaceutical products donated mm -hmm. by the Global Fund, which have been locked up at the Temaport since May last year, will leave the ports mm -hmm. uh, for more distribution. This follows the intervention of the Acting Commissioner General, who met with the leadership of the country coordinating mechanism of the Global Fund to fight HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria, CCM Ghana, in a bid to resolve the impasse. Um, okay, apparently, the drugs are valued at over $45 million. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Siam, at a meeting with CCM Ghana indicated that it was unfortunate, listen carefully, mm. it was unfortunate that while an exemption mm. had been granted for the products, there were outstanding liabilities for third party clearance fees, charges, demerge, and other penalties on the goods at the port. Due to the non payment of the charges, the goods have overstayed and therefore been forfeited into GRA custody no that in itself is also wrong because you see the law is very clear as to the applicable charges and that is stated under section 26 of the law and this is what it says section 26 of act 1083 says that if with your permission randy, randy let me read 26 one a person who uses a service for which an administrative fee or other charge is chargeable under the fees and charges miscellaneous provisions act 2022 act 1080 is not exempt from the payment of the associated administrative fee or charge so how much is this fee that we are unable to pay how much is it how, how much how much is it Mm -hmm. That if you are granted the exemption in respect of all the drugs, how much is the but processing fee? First of all, yes. what is it that led to the non-clearance? For which reason, demerge and other things have had to come in? You see, we were not told. But yes. this new development says that the exemption has been granted. It, it appears that there has been, they brought an application under Section 12 of the Act 83, uh, 1083, to get that exemption granted by the Minister of uh, Finance, uh, granted by Minister of uh, Health, authorized by Minister of Finance. That's what the law says. But if the issue is about the applicable administration fee, how much is it? And, and why must it take it so long for this to come up? Up to now, we don't even know how much that mean fees and charges were. Because the law says that under 26, if you, are, if, you are, if you are liable to pay those administrative charges, then you are not exempted from paying them under, under this law. So you have to pay them. So we need to know how much it was that led to these um, 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 uh, problems that we, we find ourselves. But it's unacceptable. It, it, it sends very wrong signals to a lot of people who may want to do good to us. I don't know. Oh, no. Okay, let's see, let's see how it goes. Uh, Dr. Kobay says that he would uh, ensure that everything is sorted out. It's so, it's so, 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 so embarrassing. To be honest with you, if if I were the global fund, I would even blacklist Ghana. Yeah. Anyway. 
Mm. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the minority in Ghana's parliament, uh, Dr. Kuwe, has demanded the immediate interdiction of the Registrar of the Scholarship Secretariat following an investigative report by the Fourth Estate into his conduct. The report alleges that scholarships intended for deserving and academically excellent students in need were instead granted based on political affiliations and other inappropriate criteria. According to the Fourth Estate's investigation spanning 2019 to 2020, individuals linked to the ruling party were reportedly given preferential treatment in the scholarship awards. One MPP official allegedly received multiple scholarships totaling £57,210 for postgraduate studies, while a special assistant to the vice president's spouse purportedly obtained £17,355 for a program in the UK, which they allegedly never attended. In light of these revelations, the minority MPs are demanding the immediate resignation of Kingsley Ajiman, the Registrar of the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat. They are also calling for prompt investigation by the Office of the Special Prosecutor into the operations of the Secretariat. The minority statement emphasizes that these findings have been corroborated by testimonies from Ghanaians both domestically and internationally. The series of investigations by the Fourth Estates have since been corroborated by other patriotic Ghanaians, both women abroad. Many have cited instances of extortion, bribery, and collection of kickbacks allegedly involving the Registrar of the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat, Kingsley Ajima, and other officials. Other first and chilling accounts of our compatriots who have reached out to the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat for help reveal wanton corruption and gross abuse of office by these officials of the Kufadu Baumi and PP government. The minority also called on President Kufadu to act swiftly to protect the public purse from further abuse. Widespread reports of multiple scholarships worth several thousands of dollars, sometimes awarded to the same individuals in the same year, reveal the extent of abuse of the taxpayers' money. Worst of all, it has been reported that these awards are sometimes handed to NPP-aligned persons for two-week training programs abroad. In return for some kickback, in light of the above revelations and others which will be contained in details of the over 900 foreign scholarships awarded between 2019 and 2020, yet to be published by the Fourth Estate, the NDC Minority Caucus in Parliament hereby demands the following. The immediate interdiction of the registrar, pending investigations into its operations, the special prosecutor must order an immediate forensic audit of all scholarships awarded since January 2017. We call on President Kufuado to act swiftly on this matter in order to protect the public press from further abuse. And last week we were discussing this issue, especially when the, um, I think it was the registrar, we was speaking with the Joy Multimedia, and then he indicated that there ought to be a regulation you know, dealing with this thing. And then uh, it made me sad because it looks like um, we, we believe that we are robots. You know, if we are given a little room to exercise discretion on the basis of um, whatever our competencies and patriotism and whatever is, we will not um, do so unless we are directed to do A, B, C, D, E, and F. And for some of these issues, last week I raised the issue one. If you look at some of the programs that are, uh, uh, are being pursued outside and the fact that many of those programs are run here, and if you look at the cost, sometimes one of those programs abroad, which is here, the same amount of money can be used to pay for 50 people if the, the, the thing was done here. And sometimes for some of those I've had six week, four week things that some people in the elite class ask us to pay 50,000, 60,000 pounds and dollars for them to go and, and really do. Why do we do all that? And there appears to also not be a very objective um, um, criteria. I don't know if those things should be legislated. I don't believe so. But it appears that, look, this is where we are. I mean, yes, there are allegations of people, um, people who claim that some extortion before they are given the scholarships and all that. One of them that baffled me was somebody who we paid over 15,000 pounds to go to school. The person claims that they had an accident or something. And so they didn't go. And the person didn't write to the university for a deferment and to show the medical thing and to ask for a deferment. They just couldn't be bothered because it is not their money. I'm sure if they had saved up or it was their parents who were paying they would not say that they had a medical condition or an accident. So, I mean, we've paid 15,000 pounds plus, it can go to hell. And, of course, nobody's going to take any action against such persons. The person even has a temerity to even tell us that the school keeps sending them mails asking for uh, money for accommodation and all that. Uh, okay, I don't, I'm sure that you've been following this issue. I don't uh, know what you've been doing. Doc, um, <laughs> you know, 
And when the list is published, I will be interested in finding out the kind of courses yes. that were paying money for people to oh. go and pursue. Doc, um, I want to say that these are one of those <clears throat> few instances where we, we, we appreciate the work of journalism. And that is not necessarily to say that any and everything Manasseh has done is um, sacrosanct. And uh, perfect. Why am I saying this? Manche. Mm -hmm. And this is not equalization, but this is to bring our attention to the fact that when you put an arrangement in place and you don't learn from its operationalization, people can abuse it for long. Doc. So if you go and check, I was, when I went to Presec, you know, my mother was struggling to pay our fees. You know, because of me, it was two hours ago, myself and my twin sister. And they told us they were doing some interview for scholarship at AME. I ironed my shorts, my shirt, looking sharp, first year student. And you see what you see there? Yeah. The scholarship secretary, the, 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 the legalization has not reached there. Okay. This is what they gave to the fourth estate when they were compelled by RTI to give them the details of the scholarships. Okay. This is how they gave it to them. I'm sure it's a foundation document. Foundation. That's, it, that, it must be transcribed. It looks like it looks like concrete those. Post it. So the US litigation, they call it inundation. Uh, yeah. Give you stockpile of documents. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so yeah, doc, I went for the interview. Serious confidence. Twelve ones mm -hmm. from field engineers. Fine student. In your bar, how much? The list of bar away. Oh, so baby. Baby, how much? Many are on scholarship. As one, a me assembly man. Come and walk with me, baby. Oh, so the point I'm making is that, unfortunately, we have a history where packages that are put in place for meritorious people or needy people, sometimes it doesn't serve the purpose. But the one who put the package in place can't envisage all those things. It is for those who have watched and monitored operationalization, who are supposed to now do subsequent... In fact, it's the expectation yes. of those who mooted the idea yeah. that those who will be responsible for the implementation would apply the work in accordance with the spirit of it. Correct. But, Doc, uh, you realize that human beings by nature are driven by interest. It's one of the things one big businessman in this country told me. Mm. I went to him when things were tough for me when I was MP. I complained about this. He said, Doc, what those you are mentioning, they have interest. Have you thought of their interest? Everybody moves on interest. So the point is that those in the AMA then, who were in the assembly, who sat on the agreement and the package to allocate funds for that scholarship. Their interest was that they were bringing their people to come and benefit from this scholarship. So to address this after operationalization, that's why you can now put some steps in place to mitigate those interests or subdue it, like writing an objective test, publishing the results, letting those who score go through maybe another level of an essay, giving it to a third party to do the grading. You know, council, there are a few things you do, and then it will be clear, you know, British government gives scholarship. Mm -hmm. If you go and check. Chevening. Exactly. In if you go and check, all those who were beneficial of their scholarship are heavyweights in code. You can feel their impact, and you, you have no doubt if they tell you these are uh, uh, beneficiaries of scholarships or scholars. Doc. Now, I will not mention names, but I'm also told that you have people who are highly connected, who in the uh, era before we came, mm. also studied in Aberdeen, certain mm. places, mm. based on government scholarship or mm. government scholarship. So, when I sit down, based on some of the learnings I've had in politics, mm. I'm not in a rush to go like, oh, how come 
this guy who is connected to MPP or NDC went to school in Aberdeen. Rather, the first thing I'm interested in is what are the mitigating measures to put in place? Mm -hmm. Or the reverse question, since the lawyer is here, is that was it criminal or did he bring any, breach any rule when this person was given the scholarship? Mm -hmm. uh, so immediately realized that a person is not really breaking a rule or breaching a rule. But on the surface of it, there is not much fairness or there is abuse. That's where quickly we must come together as a country and put in place measures to correct that. And, and look, I, I agree with you when you say that sometimes the amount of money spent on one person can pay for the same cost 20, 30 Ghanaians here in Accra or in Kumasi or any part of the country. We have to take a second look. If, what it, if it will take listing courses, that will be bad from uh, the sponsorship abroad. We should go ahead and list them. And we should indicate that the list can be subjected to a review, depending on courses that emerge. Um, look, some got the, their courses. If you go and check their academic background, it, is, it could be based on merit as well, doc. Others also, when you go and check, it is because of who they know. But, you see, because they will end up being Ghanaians who might qualify, maybe it's the area of need. I know one doctor that was cited that they said has a private hospital and all that. So really, when you look at his standing, he didn't uh, qualify. The only program, doc, that I know even for rich people, sometimes they get sponsorship because hardly do people pay money for is PhDs. As well, PhDs in the sciences or for academics. Look, there's a PhD in surgery, PhD in anatomy. They know that these are courses that when you do it automatically, either you are going to teach or you are into research that will benefit the country. And PhDs by structure are work or have part-time job themselves because you are going to do research and all that. But beyond that, I went to Hamburg when I was working as a doctor in Chebi to do my master's in public health, University of Applied Sciences. Look, I paid 6,000 euro a semester times four. While I was working, can you win in a couple of can change to euros. So you paid yourself? Yes. Mm. Until I finished Hamburg, I didn't know that people actually end papers with the state. In fact, Hamburg was like the third or fourth certificate degree dog, all I paid for. Mm. You know, so uh, uh, what I want to say, as for my friends in the opposition dog, uh, there is some substance in asking for um, a, a closure of that space that gives room for discretion dog. I'm choosing my words well. Closing that space. That it, there are ways to close it, like I said. We can have objective tests, you can have essays, you can have outsourcing, all that. But this thing of the guy should resign, should be fired, interdicted, be a political, you mm. know, 2024. Mm. But when you throw the thing that this guy must be caught, mm. then out there, this guy is a, mm. is a working, uh, J, how do you call it, convict. Mm. So that aspect, when I'm speaking as a statesman. Mm. Uh -huh. That aspect is politicking. But the part that there's so much discretion, it should be closed. I agree. And there are ways... What this... about the allegations of extortion? I'm worried about that. Oh, Doc, as for extortion, you are going to criminality. If you study criminal law... Mm. <laughs> one chair. <laughs> two services. <laughs> Eva is using his uh, two semester LLB to, to lecture me on criminal law. <laughs> You know, I happen to be sitting with a lawyer, yes. and then something happened. And I said, You know, in law, you have to do this. No, not in law, I'm a big lawyer. Mm. No, need to slow down. <laughs> you guy can, doctor, you know, you big law. <laughs> vim, vim, so, you know, so I, I, that one is the area of crime, which uh, has its own, uh, how do you call it, confines and definitions. And that can be dealt with. Doc, you know, that one, you have to do investigations, you have to get evidence that is above board, there should be, it should be airtight and all that. That's criminal procedure. So, in effect, look, if we want to make gains as a country in discussing this matter, 
and not come back to it. We have to find ways to close the space on discretion. Otherwise, in the next 16 years, no, in the next eight years, after uh, Mahmoud, Dr. Mahmoud comes, it's likely that if Dr. Uh, Mahmoud becomes a minister at education, these things will happen again mm. if we don't close that space. Mm. One hour. Yet, um, uh, Doc, what can I say? The issues are the issues that you are asking us to discuss this morning. They are very depressing. I have seen the parliamentary handset. Yes, yeah? and I've seen your name. Yeah, no, that's not the answer. That's the business statement. Okay, the business statement. Okay. Yes, and I've seen your name. Yes, um, in the um, try and project it. In fact, before you, mm. before your name on mm. one four seven seven is Miss Abla Jifa Gumashi K to South. Yes. To ask the minister for water region what plans are input, that's the tidal wave. Yes. But when it comes to a relevant issue, now you say to ask the minister of state at the office of the president the details, and this is for 13th of March. Yes. 13th of March. So yes. that, this should be about three and a half weeks ago. Yes. Okay. So this was before the fourth estate expose. Before. Okay. Now, to ask the minister of state at the office of the president the details of all of our payments of stipend. Mm. Made to beneficiaries of government scholarships, both local and abroad, by the Registrar of the Scholarship Secretary since he assumed office, mm. with comprehensive account details on how the overpayments were made and recovered, and through which accounts. Mm. And second, you had the second question to ask the Minister of State and Office of the President the details of all official travels by the Registrar of the Scholarship Secretariat mm. and his entourage mm. since he assumed office, and the purpose as well as the total cost of each trip to the state. Mm. And then two of your colleagues mm. also had questions. Mm. So Mrs. Angela Foriwa Aloute, Afaja to South, mm. says to ask the Minister of State, at the Office of the President, the full details of scholarships granted to Ghanaians for both local and international courses by the yeah. Scholarship Secretariat yeah. from 2017 to date, and the yeah. quantum of Stephen paid and received by the beneficiaries. Yeah. Then Dr. Clement Abbas Park, Busa South, mm. says to ask the Minister of State at the Office of the President which, when funds will be disbursed to Ghanaian students studying mm. on government scholarships abroad by the Scholarship Secretariat. Okay. Now, what informed these questions? Now, we have constituents who call you mm -hmm. and tell you that we are on government scholarship. We are in so-and-so school, at so in so-and-so country, but our stipends are not being paid. However, some of our colleagues, sometimes the same university, but in different faculties or departments, have received theirs. Mm -hmm. So clearly, there's a case of discrimination. Another will come and say that I have applied for government scholarship. I had first class grade points, let's say 3.9. I had a colleague who had a second class upper grade point 3.4. Similar programs, or sometimes the same program. He got a scholarship. I didn't get it. So we want you to look into it. Oh, oh, all right. So when MPs receive information like this, we are compelled to file a question directed at because you see, one of the the governance problems we have is that the scholarship secretariat, because it's a it's a it's an extra ministerial body established in 1960 and placed under the office of the president. The oversight is always difficult. It's not placed under any ministry directly. It's placed under the office of the president. So chief of staff is the one that superintends over the issues. But you cannot bring, by our, our, our governance protocols, you cannot bring the chief of staff to come and answer questions in parliament. So we bring, just the way you cannot bring the judicial secretary to come and answer questions regarding the maybe some administrative issues of the judicial service. If you want to direct questions at the judicial service, you have to direct it at the attorney general. So in this case, we are fortunate to have ministers of state who are assigned to the office of the president. So in that case, they can come and answer the questions. And that's all we've done. But they, they sidestep the issues when it's time, when the question is, 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 is advertised, they'll come and give some flimsy excuse that the person is not available and all that, until the fourth estate uh, went to town on this matter.
The rocks and the issues at the scholarship secretariat. It's Dr. Randy Abbey. It's unbelievable. Really? It's also unbelievable. In fact, some of the people will tell you that I have been called that my application for, say, postgraduate studies to, say, University of Aberdeen or, say, Cambridge has been approved. I've been uh, an amount of, let's say, thirty-five thousand pounds has been approved for me. But then the the person will tell you that you know that you are entitled to thirty thousand pounds, so you must come and pay the five thousand pounds. People are so people are actually asked to come and pay money. But are people are these people? Yeah, who are telling all these things willing to come forward? Well, are they willing to provide evidence? You no, know, if the inquiries, you see. What minority minority has has um, raised the bar now beyond merely asking parliament filing parliamentary questions, they've increased the tempo. They are now they are asking for a, a, an interdiction as well as an inquiry into the matter. So so once they are asking for an interdiction, an inquiry is made. Then we can urge these persons who are victims to come forward and speak. They ask whether there is evidence. No, but no, no. He he said that are they willing to come forward and speak? You cannot the 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 parliament. But this money the in the interdiction, what would the police show for the interdiction? The press allegations. No, no, no. On the, the basis of see, allegations, the, 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 the fact press, that the, the press fact is that making you, you 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 shouldn't be in a position to interfere with the no the press. First of all, <laughs> first, no, 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 no. Go okay, 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 okay. The go, office. Look oh. at this. You mean you mean the interdiction? Look at look at the case of ACP Agoji. No, no. Yes. So I was confusing the interdiction with the uh, being processed. For, uh, but, no, no. Uh, it's, it's not criminal <laughs> prosecution. This is interdiction administrative. <laughs> that is. Let me use Kufo's language. Step aside. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed or leave. Now, what the minority is asking is that there is a need for an inquiry, a major inquiry to the matter, because of the plethora of allegations. Why? The fourth estate is bringing some details that appears to um, pander towards the claim that the awards were, were largely made based on cronyism, favoritism, a conflict of interest, and all. So if it's worthy to be looked into, then he must step aside. For the inquiry to be made. In the course of the inquiry, we'll come and speak to grounds upon which that he extended this, 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 or he approved of these applications for. And it's not the only scholarship secretary that grants scholarships. Get Fund also does. Get Fund hasn't got these problems. Why? Because the structures are properly. I'm told that Get Fund, the, the, lately, they focus mainly on uh, domestic scholarships. Yes. Yes, they I think in the past, yes, they used to be both, to, both yes. domestic and foreign. Yeah. But a pol is, so this is how we expect state institutions to be doing things. When you think that there's a major dream by funding foreign courses, which are largely run by local institutions, you switch. Nothing prevents you from taking the greater interest of the people into account. That now, if you want masters I mean, in you law, you see people do. I mean, some of these MBAs and all that. And my point is that... Uh, look, uh, uh, MBA in entrepreneurship. You see, okay, my point <laughs> is that okay. if you want to do um, an MBA or an MBA in a foreign institution, that's your choice. Why must the state pay for, it. pay for it? It's your choice. You understand me? I've made choices for postgraduate mm. certifications. Mm. You did all here? No. Okay. But I did not beg yeah. yeah, anybody, anybody with it. Yeah. It's my choice. Mm. You know, and, and Doc, this is not this is also not the end. I could have also in, used the um, connections. Yes, in, in Auditor General's report for 2020-2021, is replete with people who one are, are given steady live with pay. So they take their salary, they get state funded scholarship, they go and study and they refuse to come back. I'm told about hundred and something. Yes. They refuse to return at, to post. And nothing so, happens. So, and nothing is happening. So, Chairman Aveji, during our last hearing in February, before we went on recess, directed that those persons be set at. They should first refund the salaries that they took and to refund 
the scholarships that the the benefit the amounts that they receive under the scholarship in lieu of that prosecution Abaji has all these powers. Yes, as a committee. And he's a very big man. Yes. That is why when you come and you will see that your irregularities are, are merely irregularities, we allow you to go. But when they are serious, we search at you. But you know, look, when <laughs> people, are, people are hustling for scholarships, mm. and then somebody, you get a scholarship, the fee is paid mm. in the UK. Mm. Then it turns out that you did not even go at all and, and th that's the next point i want to make so aside from this scenario the auditor general also flag another practice which is that people get a scholarship the monies are paid they don't attend the school at all or they take the school they are able to take the scholarship by some 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 dubious means the money comes to them they don't attend the school and the auditors have flagged all this, and it's in the report. And we have given that directives. We are not getting a feedback. One took the scholarship, didn't, didn't attend the university, um, trans and, and exited that institution and joined another public institution in this country. Ah. Yes. Even, 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 even uh, salaries. So let's assume that Metro TV is a state well, institution. You are not linked the Ghana card to... <laughs> You know, so it's 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 a lot. The road within the public sector is is unbelievable, it, and it's all because there's nothing happening. There's a there's a laissez faire attitude by no, those things are deliberate. Those things are deliberate. Oh no 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 no! Because you're also guilty. The person who's supposed to crack the whip is himself yeah, guilty. Yeah, yeah. Is involved in greater crime. So you won't be chasing people who have engaged in smaller crimes. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, we are here today. The uh, party will take a decision on Yendi. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw it on a WhatsApp. Hey. I don't know how to... You see, it. what I was talking about, about people, whether they'll be willing to come forward and all that. I've started receiving messages. I'm just hoping that when there is any such probe, all these persons will be able to come up. There is somebody who is saying that uh, he can confirm that there is rot and that he's personally paid 85000 through somebody for his kid brother to have a deal. Good. So when you go through so somebody, you can't tell whether it reaches the end. Well, no, 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 well that but is like the, the commitment fee. Well, but at least it means that there is a certain racket. Yes. That is if it is true. Yes. My point is that we don't be willing to speak. Probe, uh -huh, all such persons... Must be willing. Yes. Otherwise, yes. It then will not there be is anywhere. a journey to know why. Yes, you know. So it is eighty-five thousand in terms of pounds. That's Depend like five thousand. It also depends on when the person pays the money. Yes, mm. but even by even if it's fifteen to one. Well, because there's a there's a uh, there was a program. Uh, was it something's program? Mm. News five. Yes, yes, yes. Where there was a gentleman who mm. also spoke about mm. this issue of extortion. Yes, I just told, that I just told you students. Yes, they actually sent us. In information so they tell you that your application is worth 30,000 pounds, but we have approved that's 35. What, that's what the people claim, yes, they are told. So they tell you that we have approved 35,000 pounds, so you have to you have to come and pay 5,000 pounds and take the 35. And and this complainant also paid, so they also have been told they also conspired to dupe the state. But will they all be willing? I, and I agree with your question. Mm. That would they be willing to come Look, forward and testify? Well, I have some information here yes. that between 2017 and 2021, mm -hmm. the scholarship secretariat awarded 7,423 local scholar, uh, foreign scholarships. 7,423. Mm -hmm. And 124,960 local scholarships. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 124,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. Local scholarships. Mm -hmm. And apparently, mm -hmm. for all the scholarships, um, they, they have some procedures over there. I have seen this data okay. before. Please. Okay. Those who put so this come data, and answer, come and speak to this in parliament. Those who put this data out, I beg them. They should try and put a value to the 7,400. Yes. yes. Okay. And that's what we're asking value for. To the 124,000. Yes. All right. And that's what we're asking for. All right. I just stop this uh, 120 something 7,000. I, I, I think. I think. Because I've seen yeah. this kind of data being put out there. Yeah. Let them add the values. Mm. 
how much it costs, how much the 7,400 cost Ghana. Mm. As against the local one to the 4,000, how much yeah. it costs Ghana. No, uh, and, and this is within four years, the yeah, data. Yeah, that's within because like years. I've told you, some of these um, foreign programs, mm. one of them mm. can pay no, no, uh, as for, yes, yes. As for, as, as for that one, mm. we are on the so same. So sometimes this seven thousand one twenty something mm. thing really mm. Mm. We're on the same by thing. itself it doesn't mm. speak to mm. the issues. Mm. But but doc, let me encourage the opposition. And out of the seven thousand, so I will be, mm. even be interested that this seven thousand and something. What kind of courses? Which programs? Yes, well, no, no, you are right. So if you see which programs? if you see the kind of questions we live we we filed, we want all these details. One other issue. Which hasn't come up is that the man travels nearly every week. Well, if his job requires him to travel every week, why, why, why would he? I'm saying I don't know. Yes, but you I'm saying that travels, if these are official trips, those are they are not uh, substantive. They are substantive no, because if, if they are, are informed, I'm saying that the official trips it has a huge financial toll on the budget of. So you mean these are official trips? They are informed by who? No, by, all I'm saying, by, all, by I'm saying our informants. all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that if they are official trips, yeah. I hope you understand. If they are official trips, yes. and it can be justified that yeah. by the nature of his work, he needs to travel that much. So be it. Ah, doc, official trips, uh, administrative, executive secretary of the scholarship no. secretary. To but, but, I'm but, just but, saying that as I sit here, to work. as I sit here, I'm ignorant about even the president or the foreign minister doesn't travel every but, week. But, uh, the way Ghanaians will benefit from it's this advocacy yeah. and yeah. demand for transparency is not necessarily to jump and say, indict him, let him resign, prosecute him. It's to, again, give deliberate steps that we should take as a country to close that big gap which allows discretion to be at play. Mm. If we don't close this gap, and I'll say it on the show. Mm. In the next five, ten years, mm. if your, we'll your, be your guests come back, mm. they will discuss these issues again. You see, you see, because you raised an extremely important point, which is very, very important. Linked to this is the fact that we only go from bad to worse when bad is not punished and rectified. And therefore, it gives people the, how do they call it, the impunity mm. to then do worse. Mm. So I agree with you. In the absence of what I agree with you at hundred and one percent. But I'm just telling you that in addition to that, you see, you, you said that somebody told you that everything is by interest, which is very, very true. But then it looks like we've gotten to a place where, in addition to the interest, there is unbridled greed. Mm. There's unbridled greed. Yeah. And when this level of greed mixes with lays with politics interest. Mm. Political and, interest. And then the level of toxicity. 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 And on our air. Especially when the lazy, you also get political interest. <laughs> yes. Uh, political interest. In an election year. Mm. With a vibrant opposition. Mm. No, so, I want to know that you English. Uh, special greetings to the Honorable Minister for Roads, the current one. Hey. Uh, okay. But you, you okay, can tell okay. him already. Uh, At the beginning of the program, didn't you say... Let me end with Enuga. him. Enuga. Enuga. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let me... So special greetings to Honorable Senso. The Vice President is going to work towards a 2,000 megawatt, megawatt addition to our generation capacity. He's <laughs> uh, so, so going to work. In the next eight years, <laughs> when it comes, 2,000 megawatts <laughs> of solar. Going green. Ah, but what has it been doing for the past eight years? Ah, but the past eight years, you have to manage very well what you have before you. you uh, so is that you want to know what's been doing the last eight years? Yes. Aplanchenomics. Yeah. <laughs> doc, so, doc, this is serious. Two thousand megawatts of solar, especially because of the greenness, will add to our energy mix. Then the final greetings ah, goes you, to. You will do. The, oh, let me greet. No, Look no. at Sean O'Connor. Let me greet. <laughs> the final greetings goes to. The chief of staff mm -hmm. of the republic. Mm -hmm. uh, honorable Are you one of the supporters for running? Oh, you know they've composed I'm, a song for him. I'm dealing strictly mm -hmm. with the administrative and motherly 
uh, functions she performs. Okay. It's my mother and my administrator, my boss. A, a newspaper says that is a uh, the new finder. Yes. You know the paper, right? Yes. Okay. It's a straight fight between Natasha and Napu for anime, stronghold or swing region. Because my weight is small. These are two elephants. Okay. And you are what? So so I'll I'll pray that God will give Dr. Baumia wisdom so that he will find the right person. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, Doc, let me reiterate the point made by the minority leadership mm -hmm. that the executive secretary of the scholarship secretariat. Why are you targeting the person? He, he, must, he must be fired. Why are you targeting him? No, we are not targeting him. We are yes. targeting a very corrupt and incompetent. Does the scholarship secretary not have a board? He yes, but board. we are calling on the on the appointor, the president, to fire him as a matter of. It, it sounds like you are you are, are not, targeting no. an individual. You see, no, no, doc. We are looking at the problems he has created, the sheer level of corruption exhibited during his tenure. Mm. All right, mm. the fa you 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 heard about last year that uh, students were not getting their stipends. That people were being, be, they would well, be able He didn't have the money to send. Ah, but how come he's giving people fifty thousand dollars and all to go and read MA in entrepreneurship? Hmm. So he has been so incompetent and very corrupt and greedy. So no, no, no. no. Oh, why? This, this I have information that he travels no, every but this, week. This, no, no. But I'm okay, not, I will draw the greed. Yeah, you are the lawyer. Yeah, okay, yes. I will draw the greed. But not I'm saying greed, but the corrupt. Oh, but it's but, not been substantiated. But there I'm are saying, allegations. Yes, but it's not been substantiated. So, so why is it that so you don't make? Why, so why is it that? Why is it that my that question, my parliamentary questions, he hasn't, he hasn't prepared the minister of state to come. No, but that that does not make him corrupt. You yeah, know that. Uh, if you are running away, no, you know that. no you if you are running away, no. Means. If if I filed my way, my way of, my way of oversight uh, uh, exercise of my power of oversight, if I have directed questions at your agency yes. and you have failed and or refused. Yes. To come and provide information, I am. I am. I am make, entitled. You no, know, you, nope. you could be entitled on the floor. No, perhaps. I am entitled. No, maybe on the floor. Perhaps. I am entitled yes. to say that you are corrupt. That's why I don't want to come and account. No, so so, so you're still watching. So see, 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 yes, see. Okay, we draw. Yeah, we draw. I'm the speaker. We draw. Okay. So we all these explanations, if you have we draw. Why did you? And I think that he should be fired. Okay. Yes, he should be fired as a matter of agency mm. and inquiry. Held into his, his stewardship between when he was appointed mm. and now. Mm. Otherwise, students who have been given the scholarship. Kind of candy, right? he, he won't PC for Ebuah Pass out. Okay. Oh, PC for Ebuah Pass out. That's right. Atachian's place. Yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> we are waiting for him. We are talking to a future colleague. Ah, we are waiting for him. If you're on the floor, you know we have power to direct questions at colleague, colleague members of parliament. That's, that's the new standing order. I'm in position. And look at the powers of the future at all. Oko, you are in abeyance. <laughs> Oko, you are in abeyance. Be guided. Uh, be what, guided. What can come? Can come. Can come. <laughs> Oko, I can file another process. Yes, what can come? I can, 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 can file another interest. process. That will prevent you from... Customer, customer. Who Ah, na da ben na mi cha me cha pa 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 pa. Mi cha tengana. Tengana. Tengana si. Na no no dia. Send na obenya. Tengana si di sino. Mi dia. Eh, maybe fifty four thousand Ghana cedis. Fifty four thousand. Fifty five hundred and forty million. Yeah. We are the one who na mi cha me dia. Yeah, yeah. Ene na giga giga. Adi etu na we. Na wa boki. Ah, draw no na sa si ano eh. One of our daily lucky winners. Dial star nine four six hash to play now. Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority.
Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Time to check out what is trending on social media. And when one lady who's been trending with the African Prince uh, just uh, bumped into the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last week, too, I saw her. Yeah, chopping happy. love with her. Yeah, I saw her. Happy. Star BIB. Yeah. Okay. Hey. <laughs> that song. That was the Man, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's the song. Yeah, yeah that's the song. Ah. By Ampong. Ah, because she, she, she asked me to play for the husband, but when I heard the stuff, I wasn't too sure. Oh, if I knew it was a gospel song, I would have. Oh, is that someone there already asked for Star BAB blessings? Ah, <laughs> well, if I knew I would have played it, but ah. I thought it was one of those secular things. So when I heard the Star BAB, Star BAB, oh, oh. Star my, BAB. my uh, ah. pastors and everybody, they can okay, 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 okay. I don't okay. see us promoting uh, yes, anything, mm. okay, no. Morning. She will lead me into temptation. When the matters come, she will go and sit on social media and <laughs> and boom me a kuti at on top. <laughs> on that note, dog. Mm. Hmm. Why? There's a certain guy calling mm. you fit. Oh. Um. So now look, the case is with another person. With the, <laughs> with the another state. Person to talk about. The state says. Mm. Um, those three, you mm. know, they're being charged for uh, next story. Black men. You know. next, story. next story. The lesson in there is that. Mm. Okay. Next story. Next story. You have like seven stories. So let, I should go to the next one. On. Dog, the next one. Since when? Bridget says you should move on. So move. Oh. Yes, I'll move on. Uh, the next one, dog. Mm. Since when the students start doing kidnapping to extort money from their parents? From long time. Kidnapping. Yes. This is not the first time I've heard about it. You're talking about the preset one. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, I mean, it's not the first time I've heard oh. a story like that, yes. Good morning, Mr. Danzo. I only asked for book. Book that wasn't... But the, that, it comes in different forms. So that the children also look at the capacity of the parents. I don't kidnapping. If you can't stop the talent from your father, how will you try? <laughs> but kidnapping is on a different level, <laughs> Oh. At least you say that they deserve to buy a book. Yeah. And then you, the and things so, people have done, I say that those of us who went to school long before this uh, social, social media, media. This, we should thank God. Hey. Otherwise, there are many people in public life and office today who won't be able to show their faces. <laughs> crazy. 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 Also, I heard the story. The police has been issuing a lot of statements, you know, over the past few days, mm. and that includes that of. Um, so that story, what was that? I, I mean, I saw in a flash. What was the story really? That, that, uh, I saw two people whose face have been covered. Yes. Then they said there were juveniles involved. So yes. They, their pictures and names didn't come. Yeah. Out. But it was about some students. So it says that yeah. the point two of the statement says that preliminary investigations revealed that one of the juveniles, in an attempt to extort money from his parents to enable him to travel abroad, conspired with the others to stage a kidnapping incident. In the process, they demanded an amount of 340,000 CDs as ransom from the alleged victim's parents. So the boy wanted to travel abroad? Yes. The kid? Yes. Why? The hit catcher. He didn't see any future in Ghana. I'm not saying anything to excuse or explain his... Uh, I, I should think so. Anyway. I should think so. So, it continues that uh, further investigation disclosed that the juveniles, together with two others, succeeded in collecting an amount of 20,000 cities of the total ransom demanded. I see. So, 340,000, uh, 34,000, or uh, the 340,000 cities, mm. they got 20,000. Mm. And we're continuing that. Maybe the boy had a, an exaggerated view of <laughs> the, the the resources of his parents. Spirit, I mm -hmm. tell you, forty thousand is a lot of money. Ah, so he he needed three hundred forty thousand to travel to abroad. Travel abroad. Ah, is he okay? Ah, they say they do papa buy you. Is he okay? <laughs> anyway, so that's three hundred forty thousand Ghana cities. Yes, three hundred forty thousand. That's what states here. Ah, uh, has been stated here. I was able to get twenty thousand. Hey. I see. You know, we can wait and watch you. Yeah. It's like a little bit small. There's a gangster level. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, still on the police. Some blind man be no force. Fake blind man. Okay. So there was a crusade mm -hmm. around Anya Kaswa area. Mm -hmm. Look. Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. And this man went there. 
claiming that he's been healed. That you get good, you get some good stuff from the congregation. Ah. Now the statement released by the police says that yeah. the man has never been blind. No, so when you go to a crusade and you are healed, yes. do people give you money? Oh, say be oh, I mean, oh no, he, he made a story up that he didn't have a place to stay ah. and all of those things. Ah. And let's let's listen to what, what, what he said at the crusade. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Nah, this one is a grand. The guy did like That's a blind beggar. The town had. Hey, right? Everybody they use always a means. But the guy has a talent, eh? <laughs> he has a talent that I mean, I'm not saying the police shouldn't do their work, but he has a talent that could be utilized, especially by Kuma Wood. He's such a good storyteller. Yeah, no, the way, I'm telling yeah, the way, you. The way he said the story. Yeah, I'm telling you. He, could, he can, he can uh, really uh, develop a lot of, you know. Yeah, they can, they can get into, yeah, you know, scripts, bring out scripts or, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I am, in, right now, look, I am out. just imagining how the church is feeling about this. Oh, but the church hasn't done anything. Oh, yeah, but I mean, the church, you see, first of all, it's not a claim that was made by the church. The church didn't recruit him. Mm, yeah. You understand? Yes. Yeah, so as for the church, and the, the church hasn't done anything. So, like the hidden power, no? No, 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 no. Uh. On that note, see, the Church of Pentecost is a reputable church. Yes, that, that's And that's why yeah. I said it's, in, it's, it's very important to make it. Clear that the church played no role. No, no. yeah, he rather, true, true. He, rather he rather tried to scam, scam the, the church. church and its members. Yes. Uh -huh. And the police have, have grabbed him. Look, uh, no, this is the way they lost. No? The police. Say, when you said it, what was the question that I asked you? I said, "Have you seen any any of those people who are making those claims? <laughs> have you seen evidence of the thing having?" I've not seen it. Uh huh. That was the question I asked. Yes. And I told you that this thing many, 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 many years ago, about 30 years ago. In this car? Yeah. It used to happen. So the guy has touched me and all that thing. And then people, go, they, they, look, they lynch people. Yeah, true. The people who, were, who, true. who died. There was a guy named Shaiman, he's an evangelist. He, put some, he, he posted on Facebook mm -hmm. that he was going somewhere and just one man started shouting that, and then they started beating him. Yeah. And fortunately, some people recognize him that, oh, he's not a person, he's not like that. And some of the young guys are brave. And some of them are. Oh, they're brave today. They are some of On that note. I have a story about winter in Minnesota. One day I'll tell you that story off TV. <laughs> no, that's a, you know that's a lie, though. Winter in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the dog.
Today uh, is the birthday of our social media guy Prince. The so who will post him? Who was it like? <laughs> <laughs> who was it make a so post? So that is a phrase in your shorts. So for you guys, when you see all those things that are written there, all those things that are published, yeah, that's yeah. a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Atia, Atia man. So who will do it for him today? Today we'll look for somebody to, to post him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's praise. Rapping to my mind. Straight, straight guy. Um, he's, he's a great guy. Just a waffle. Hey. Oh, yeah. I think I can't. Oh, yeah. I can't. Oh, yeah. I know you from when? I mean, since you returned from Kumasi, your cheeks and everything. I mean, Manuela has done a great job. Uh, you know that. On that note, happy birthday to you, Prince. And then, dog, yesterday yes. was yes. Kiki's birthday. Hey. Yes. And I that. Yesterday, hey. you see, it's only slim people's birthday, of course. So, what happened yesterday? Hmm. Kiki, what did you do? <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> and director Kiki, so, happy belated well, one Kiki to you. Kiki and uh, um, Prince. Prince. Yes. I mean, who's uh, who's Tina? It's Prince, Prince your phone. No, but Kiki too phone. Prince. No, we like there for do battle. If they take off their shirt, you know who has phone. <laughs> <laughs> but they both have six packs. Not as a result of exercise. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's called Hunger Games. Kiki, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, born people are uh, God is my baba. God is my baba. Uh, God, is my... Are, God is my six pack. Evero, of what you Happy birthday to you, Kiki and Prince. Great, great guys. Um, you know, like amazing gentlemen. Yeah, yesterday was the birthday of a friend of mine. Eh? You should know him. You know, next time you're going to Kumasi, tell me and I'll let you go and see him. He's the, he's the regional engineer. Mm. Yes. I like this one. He's the regional engineer. Okay. It's called Engineer Atapoku. Engineer Atapoku. Ata. Atapoku okay. morning. He's a, he's a, okay. Have you ever heard of uh, uh, Okumkom? Yes. The Honorable Akwesi Ajima. Mm. He's mm. the mayor of Kumasi. Okay. Okay, that's his son. His, oh. his young son. Yeah, hi. Uh, but he's the, the whole Ashanti region. Yeah, he's the engineer. That's a, I'm sure you've seen him several times at Menshia. Oh. Dancing. Okay, know, okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, Menshia, they said, oh, people want to go I went to the radio station a couple of months ago. Do some rounds. So the next thing I'm going to Kumasi, yeah. you tell me, I'll let you... He's a showman, so okay. Mm. I like the last one. He's a showman. showman. Uh, so where, are, where, are showman going, be, yeah. where are going? Go with him, Manuela. <laughs> That's it for the show. Yeah. My name is Desi the Star Way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> hey. Up next, Metro Sports. <laughs>